The cartoonist Charles Schulz, who created the Peanuts, was a keen Christian. One Christmas, he featured Lucy telling her little brother, Linus, Santa Claus stops at every house in the whole world, and he climbs down every chimney and leaves a present for every boy and every girl. Linus thinks for a moment, saying, that's hard to believe, that's awfully hard to believe, and then he raises his fist in determination and shouts, but I believe it! Some Christians think they need this Linus-style faith, that they're saved if they believe with enough conviction. The Greek word for faith, pistis, means three things, so most English Bibles use three different words when translating it. Belief, faith and trust. And these represent three distinct concepts. We believe a statement such as Jesus died for everyone. We have faith in an ability or an institution such as the ability of Jesus to remove our sins or in the teaching of the church. And we trust a person such as Jesus. Belief is the gap between evidence and knowledge. Generally, the more evidence you have, the less belief you need. Jesus' life and death are facts acknowledged by all reputable historians. But of course, historians don't agree on the resurrection because extraordinary events require extraordinary amounts of evidence. And there isn't anything more extraordinary than a three-day-old corpse reviving itself. So we have to add some belief to that equation. But James said that we need more than assenting to a set of beliefs. To make sure that his readers got the point, James said something startling. You believe that there is one God. Good! Even the demons believe that and shudder. The devil presumably believes all the church creedal statements, unless there's something we've got wrong. He even believes that Jesus can save sinners by the power of his victory on the cross. He knows about this because he's the one who was defeated. What the devil doesn't do is trust Jesus to save him. Faith is the foundation of the modern world because it's needed by anyone who uses money. On every UK banknote it says, I promise to pay the bearer. Nowadays, the Bank of England says, public faith in the pound is maintained through the bank's operation of monetary policy, i.e. not by the gold that's put in the bank. We all exhibit some faith when we accept these pretty pieces of paper or plastic in return for our labour. And we, in turn, demand faith from others when we swap this other otherwise worthless piece of paper for a cup of coffee or a taxi ride. James wrote to believers who were proud that they had faith in God, saying he wasn't impressed. Show me your faith without deeds, and I'll show you my faith by my deeds. This is a salutary reminder that faith doesn't save us if it doesn't transform us. Trust in God was the great rediscovery of Martin Luther and John Calvin in the 16th century. Our salvation is only possible because of a gift of God. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. No Bible text says that salvation comes by belief in certain theological statements, or by faith in our own ability, or even by our faith in the ability of God. We're not saved by our faith at all, but by God. So we trust him to save us. The word pistis may not be straightforward to translate, 
But the concept of salvation by faith is simple. All that God requires is our trust. Faith in God and belief in God are merely other ways of saying that we trust him. God bless.